The right hand uh, alternate picking stuff, um, just right hand only without left hand, once again because of the variables of so many different kinds of possibilities with six strings and picking up and down, you can uh, create tons and tons of exercises to help your right hand. Obviously, the first one we talked about was just practicing the basic alternate picking. But then you can do, you know, different string groups, so you can go like... And that's down, up. muting the, the strings on the bridge with my, the palm of my hand a little bit just to keep the extemporaneous kind of noise down when I'm doing some of these. So that's a, a possibility there. And I'm just going, like I said, just two strings, just down, up. And then, of course, that same, that same down, up uh, combination for alternate picking, you can you know go uh, skip strings, so you can go that'd be six and four, five and three. And uh, you know sometimes when you do certain kind of picking patterns and stuff with. Uh, with a technique for some ballads or some maybe some uh, kind of folky type stuff. And so if you look at the pick that way, um, you know, I'm just going down up and just kind of randomly picking strings here. And it kind of develops your accuracy as far as like being able to grab certain string groups with a pick when you need to. So another possibility, you know, is going to be like uh, the up and down opposite. So you're going to go up, down, and see how it's kind of like in between the strings. The thing about it is, that's actually a really tough part of playing guitar, is doing that up stroke, down stroke between two strings. That can really, can really mess with you if you're trying to play fast or if you're trying to do a run. So that's a, a must kind of practice scenario there. And then of course you can go up, uh, down. So you got the up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down kind of scenario there. So those two kind of things are, are vital to playing guitar, especially scale forms and uh, different kind of melodic phrases and things like that. Now you've got other possibilities too. You can go down, up, down. You know, on three strings or four. So you can kind of see that, you know, I could sit here and probably do like, you know, probably 900 different lessons on every possible, you know, you know, mathematical uh, variant on the strings. So you just pick some of these and, and practice them. And the thing about practicing these exercises, uh, a lot of times my students say, say, well, what do you, you know, how do I know which ones to practice? Or, you know, are there some more effective than others? You know, there are some that are a little bit more vital, you know. But, you know, just taking something different um, and practicing on it can, uh, you know, on a daily basis and, uh, you know, you're not trying to necessarily master these, like, I don't think you want to get an award for being the best right-hand exercise guitarist in the world or whatever, but you want to probably, you know, try and, uh, you know, try and do different kind of string groupings, different kind of exercises to kind of keep you playing fresh. Plus, a lot of times for uh, melodic, uh, melodic ideas and things like that, you, you come across uh, interesting picking techniques and things like that. So, as far as the right hand is concerned with the alternate picking, you can just simply, you know, you could do uh, unusual stuff like, uh, you know, two, or doing like a triplet feel like that on each string. Because a lot of times you're going to play three note uh, scale patterns, you know. You know, you 
know, and so you want to be able to do that on each string. Sometimes you might play four, right? You know, or... You know, and so you can see, you know, just sitting there doing groups of fives and fours and sixes and stuff like that. And then, and then putting those variables in there against the different kinds of strings is going to give you all kinds of uh, exercises, you know, that you can really build upon to make your right-hand te technique more superior. You know, and this is kind of like arpeggiating. You know, if you, you have a, a, like a chord in C, you might have an arpeggio. You know, come, come down the line sometime, it might need, need to do that. So you want to, you know, practice getting across these strings as much as possible. And, you know, it, it's not the most exciting thing to practice in the world. It's not as much fun as practicing a double stop line or a, a banjo lick or something like that. But um, it's really just going to make your, your ability to play all those ideas uh, much easier and much better. So that's a little bit of the right hand technique there.